Welcome to today's game between the all-time Street Louis Cardinals, who will be visiting the all-time Chicago Cubs. These are two of the most storied franchises in Major League Baseball history and have had countless great players over the decades. Today, Sportsman Z will present to you a game between these players which promises to be a good one. So sit back and enjoy a game for the ages between the Cardinals and Cubs. Hello, sports fans and baseball fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today, I have for you another all-time great matchup for between two different franchises. You'll recall before I did the all-time White Sox visiting the all-time Detroit Tigers. Well, this uh, th today we are going to have the all-time St. Louis Cardinals visiting the all-time Chicago Cubs. Now, I have the same disclaimers as I had before for the Detroit game and uh, uh, the Detroit White Sox game. <clears throat> There's several of them. One is that we are not going to use ballpark effects because I may have a card in one of the teams that was made before. It, it was set up for advanced play, but it was made before Stratomatic did ballpark effects, um, incorporated them into the cards. Um, the other uh, One of the other disclaimers is that you may... Uh, be missing somebody from one of these teams if you're an all time if you're a uh, if you're a St. Louis Cardinals fan or you're a Cubs fan, you might say, "Oh, where's this guy? Where's that guy? How come this guy didn't play? Why didn't this guy start? Why was this guy on the bench?" You can ask those questions about any team in any um, really in any sport, but particularly in baseball, which has been around well over a hundred years. So. Um, the reason is that there's just too many players. Um, also, I may not have had a team um, that um, had that player on the squad, so or didn't have a good version of that player, or something like that, because Stratomatic has not made every single team in every single season. Uh, so, so players m might be missing. Uh, from that aspect of it. And uh, so with that having been said, I want to introduce to you the first we will introduce the St. Louis Cardinals. We're going to go over their lineup and then we will go over their starting pitcher and then we will look at the bench and all the players that, um, you know, most of the players won't get into the game, you would think, because most of these uh, guys can hit w really well, and the starting pitchers are excellent. But we will look at their benches and their starting lineup. Starting with the visiting Cardinals, and we will start off with the 1972 Lou Brock, who hit 311 and is a stealing double A. He will be in left field, I believe, for him. The next one will be Willie McGee. Willie McGee will bat second, and uh, it's a 1990 Willie McGee who hit 335, and he will be the center fielder. The next batter is the 1920 Rogers Hornsby, and he'll be at second base. He hit 370 this particular year with a 431 on base percentage. Then in the cleanup spot, you got Albert Pujols, and Albert Pujols will be the first baseman. Uh, he's This is the 2006 Pujols. He hit 331 and had 49 home runs, so I figure, hey, that's a good version to use. <coughs> Excuse me. Then you got Ken Boyer. Ken Boyer, the 1960 version, he's a third base one, good defensive third baseman, hit 304 and had 32 home runs. And then we got Stan the Man Musial. Of course you're going to have Stan Musial on this team. The 1947 version is the one we're going with here. Um, he hit 312 and had a 398 on base percentage. I believe he'll be the DH. Then you got Enos Country Slaughter, and he'll be the right fielder. Uh, the 1947 version hit 294. He had 10 home runs. And, uh, and then you got Ted Simmons, Hall of Famer and catcher Ted Simmons. He'll be at catcher. 
He hit 303 with uh, 16 home runs. Then you got Ozzy, the Wizard. The Wizard is going to be at shortstop. He is a great defensive shortstop, perhaps the uh, best defensive shortstop in the history of baseball. This is a 1982, or the, yes, 1982 version. He hit 248 that year with 24 doubles. And then we're back to Lou Brock. The pitcher today for the St. Louis Cardinals will be the one, the only Bob Gibson. Now, this is not the 1968 Bob Gibson. It is the 1969 Bob Gibson. And the reason it is not the 1968 Gibson is because while I do have Stratomatic's 1968 set, I have the original 1968 set, which was not set up for um, advanced play. It only has the basic side. So, uh, but this particular year, he was 20 and 13 with a 218 earned run average. And I believe they had raised the mound or lowered the mound. They, I think they had lowered the mound from 1968. So that would explain why he wasn't quite as good a year later as he was in 68 when he had a 112 earned run average. So that is that. Now let's go over the uh, pitchers and the, the reserve pitchers and the bench. You're going to have Jaime Garcia is a pitcher on the team. He did not start because Bob Gibson did. Trevor Rosenthal, a reliever, 210 earned run average. The 2015 Adam Wainwright will be on the team. He had a 161 earned run average. He can relieve, so he may actually appear. You got Chris Carpenter with his 309 earned run average from 2006. We've got Mark Littell, the 1979 Mark Littell. And this is a perfect example. You can see this card, this is the advanced card, but it does not have any ballpark effects next to anything. And so that's why we don't have that. Um, then you got Todd, <coughs> Todd Worrell from 1987, 266 earned run average. You have, <coughs> you have Ken Daly, uh, nine and five with a 266 earned run average. Next one you're going to have is the 1990 Joe McGrain. He was 10 and 17 with a 359 earned run average. Then Bob Forsh, of course, you have to have Bob Forsh on the all time Cardinals. He was 15 and nine with a 348 earned run average in 34 starts. Joaquin Endahar will make the team, the 1982 version. He was 15 and 10 with a 247 earned run average. Chuck Taylor, 1969. He was 7 and 5 with a 256 earned run average and 127 innings pitched. Ernie Brolio will make the team. He is the this is the 1960 version with a 275 earned run average in 226. Uh, innings pitched. Then you've got Lindy McDaniel. A lot of pitchers on the team, and really there are a lot of pitchers on all these teams because I am going to do like a round robin thing once they're all assembled. Uh, he was 12 and 4 with a 209 earned run average. Jesse Haynes, another pitcher from 1920, had a 298 earned run average, was 13 and 20 though. Um, and Bill Doak. Another pitcher, he was 20 and 12 with a 253 earned run average. And now we go to the bench players. You've got George Hendrick making the team. The 1979 George Hendrick hit 300 with 16 home runs, outfielder. Uh, backup third baseman, Whitey Kurzowski. He had uh, a 310 batting average with 27 homers and 27 doubles in 1947. Joe Medwick. Who, is, who hit 319 in 620 at bats with 18 home runs and 106 RBIs? Joe Torrey, of course, will make the team. A great manager and a very good player. And he will be a backup third baseman and first baseman. Not a catcher this particular year, 1972, but he hit 289 with 11 home runs. Then you got Keith Hernandez, and he'll be the one of the backup uh, first basemen. 
he will hit he hit 299 in 1982 with five in 579 at bats with 33 doubles and 94 RBIs. Tommy Herr will be a backup second baseman. I thought about starting Tommy Herr, but you know, of course, you know, the guy who is starting was uh, a lot better than him, so uh, that didn't happen. That, and that was uh, Rogers Hornsby. So a 370 hitter, we're gonna we're gonna go with him over Tommy Herb. But he was very good. He hit 266 in 1982, which is the year we're using him. Good defensive second baseman. Ken Oberkfell will make the team from 1979. He hit 301, 19 doubles. Scotty Rowland. Now, I debated whether to put him on the Phillies or on the Cardinals, but I opted to put him on the Cardinals. So when we get to the all-time Phillies, you're not going to see Scott Rowland on that team. This is from 2006 when he hit 296 with 22 home runs. Uh, Chris Duncan will make the team, hit 293 and 280 at bats. Matt Carpenter who hit 272 in 2015, 574 at bats and 28 home runs. Frankie Frisch, backup infielder. He hit 305 in 1934, which is the year that we have his card for. Bill White, backup uh, first baseman, and uh, also played a little center in left field. This is from 1960. He was a, uh, a Yankees announcer for many years. Hit 283 with 16 home runs in 1960. Jack Rothrock, um, backup outfielder. 647 at bats, 294 batting average. Bill Delancey will be a backup catcher for the team in 1934. He hit 316 with 13 home runs. And then we're back to Jaime Garcia. So that will bring us to the uh, to the uh, Cubs team, and we will meet the Cubs. So let's get them out, and uh, everybody that's going to go along with them here. Their starting lineup will be Jimmy Sheckard in left field, and this is from 1911. He hit 276. Wildfire Schulte, I think his real first name was Frank. Um, he hit 300 with 21 homers, 21 triples, and 30 doubles in 1911. Then you got Billy Williams batting third, and in the 1972 version, he hit 333 with 37 home runs, and he will be the left fielder. Ernie Banks, let's play two. Mr. Cub is going to be the shortstop, and uh, he hit 285 in 1957 with 43 home runs and 102 RBIs, and that is the card we're using. For Ryan Sandberg, we'll be using the 1989 card. He hit 30 home runs, had a 290 batting average, and he is also a great defensive second baseman. Uh, Gabby Hartnett will be the catcher. Uh, 1934, he hit 299 with 22 homers. Andy Pafko will be in center field. He had 513 at bats in 1947 and hit 302 with 13 homers and 66 RBIs. Jim Hickman will be the um, first baseman. He uh, hit 272 in 368 at bats with 17 home runs. Heine Zimmerman will be the third baseman, and he um, hit. 307 with nine homers and 17 triples in 1911, which is the card we're using. And we're back to Sheckard. The starting pitcher for the Cubs will, of course, be Three Finger Brown. This is the 1911 Three Finger Brown. He was 21 and 11 with a 280 earned run average and 270 innings pitched in 27 starts. So he's going to be their starting pitcher. And let's look at the the uh, backup pitching and the backup bench players for the Cubs. First, you've got from 1920, uh, you've got Pete Alexander, who was 27 and 14 with a 191 earned run average. 
Then you got Hippo Vaughn. Hippo Vaughn from 1920 with a 19-16 record and 254 earned run average. Charlie Smith. Charlie Smith will make the team. He was 3-2 and two with a 142 earned run average in 38 innings. Ed Ruhlbach. And this is the 1911 Ed Ruhlbach. He was 16 and 9 with a 296 earned run average in 222 innings. Then you got Kyle Hendricks, the fairly recent uh, starting pitcher for the uh, Cubs. 2020 is the card we're going to use. He was 6 and 5 with a 288 earned run average in 81 innings. Of course, 2020 was the strikes shortened season, so for uh, a 60 game season, 81 innings is a sizable amount of time to have pitched. Got Rick Russell. Rick Russell from 1976. He's 14 and 12 with a 346 earned run average. Bruce Souter. Now we're going with a 1976 Bruce Souter. He was 6 and 3 with a 270 earned run average in 83 innings. Hall of Fame relief pitcher. Jack Aker is going to make the team. He was 6-6 six and six with a 296 earned run average reliever. Fergie Jenkins. Now, I debated whether to start Fergie Jenkins over uh, Three Finger Brown, but I opted for Three Finger Brown. Fergie Jenkins, though, in 1972 for the Cubs was 20-12 and 12 with a 320 earned run average. Milt Pappas in 1972 was 17-7 and seven with a 277 earned run average. Bill Hands, reliever starter, 1972 and 189 innings pitched. He had a three earned run average. Jeremy Jeffress from 19 or from 2020 had a 154 earned run average in 23 innings. Emil Cush, reliever, he had a 336 earned run average in 91 innings. Pedro Strope from 2013. He was 2-2 two two with a 283 earned run average in 35 innings. Albert Elzele, and he in uh, 2020 had 21 innings pitched and a 295 earned run average. Steve Stone is going to make the team. He had a 408 earned run average in 1976 in 75 innings pitched. And now the bench players. You've got Woody English. Woody English, the backup uh, infielder from 1934, and he hit 278 with uh, three homers and five triples and 26 doubles. Jerry Morales from 1976. He hit 274 in 537 at bats with 16 home runs. Ian Happ from 19 or from 2020 hit 258. In 198 at-bats, he had 12 home runs, which is very good. And so you can see a lot of home runs on the card. Mark Grace, 1989's Mark Grace. He hit 314 in 510 at-bats. Cal Neiman will be a backup catcher on the team. He only hit 258 in 1957, but had 415 at-bats and 10 home runs. Hank Sauer, and Hank Sauer will be a backup outfielder primarily. He hit 275 and 509 at bats with 31 homers and 99 RBIs. Babe Herman, backup uh, right fielder and first baseman, in 467 at bats, he hit 304. Joe Tinker, now uh, I want to uh, preface this by saying Evers is not on the team. I didn't have a good Evers, so Joe Tinker, but Joe Tinker did make the team. He is a shortstop one, good defensive shortstop, 536 at bats, 278 batting average. And then we're back to Pete Alexander. And so those are your all-time Cubs and all-time Cardinals. And with that having gotten out of the way, we are ready for a game between these two behemoths of history. And uh, so buckle in and sit back and enjoy. Well, with everything out of the way now, let's get on with the game. St. Louis is the visitor. So they will bat first, and that means that Mr. 
Lou Brock is leading off against Three Finger Brown. And he gets a 2-6. Brown is a righty, and that is going to be a single. So we got a leadoff single for the big stolen base man uh, before Ricky Henderson. And he is a double A, so we are going to try to steal. It is a 15, so now we got to take a look at that. Um, he is a uh, double, well, a double A is a 1 to 17, but the catcher for the, uh, is a negative, he's a negative 2, so he still makes it. He barely pulls in and makes the stolen base. So he is in with a stolen base, and he's on second base with Willie McGee. Willie McGee is up, and he's a bunting D, so they're not going to do that. He gets a 4-6, and he would be batting left. He's a switch hitter, and that's going to be a single double asterisk, and the Cardinals have just pulled ahead after the first two batters. It's incredible. Brown has given up two hits and a run on the first two batters of the game. And Rogers Hornsby comes up. He's a 370 hitter, remember? He gets a 4-6 batting right, and that is going to be a strikeout. So Rogers Hornsby, ironically, the best hitter on the team is the first out. And with one down... And a man on, Pujols is up. And Pujols gets a 2-9 against a righty. That's going to be a fly ball to left field. And that brings up Ken Boyer. Kenny Boyer, the third baseman. He gets a 4-7 batting right, and that is going to be a ground ball to the shortstop. So he goes out 6-3, but... Three Finger Brown does allow a run, and the Cardinals are up one nothing, going into the bottom of the first. And that brings up Jimmy Shepard as the first batter. And he'll be facing Bob Dixon. And that is a 1-4 against a righty, and that's going to be a fly ball to left. So Shepard flies out to left. One down, and that brings up Wildfire Schulte. And he gets a 2-6, and that is going to be a triple. So Wildfire Schulte pulls up on third base with an out and a man 90 feet away. And that is the first hit allowed by Bob Gibson. Billy Williams is up. Billy Williams gets a 3-7, and that's going to be a fly ball center field B, but it does score the run. And we have a tie game here. Just like that, we got a tie game. And Ernie Banks, let's play two, gets up and he's got a 6-5 batting right. And uh, that is going to be a, that's going to be a single. So Ernie Banks is aboard. He gets a hit. There's two outs now. Second hit allowed by Bob Gibson and Ryan Sandberg, the batter, the second baseman. He gets a 5-2 batting right, and that is going to be a strikeout. Oh, wait, I got it. Oh, all right, hold on. So uh, we're going to the... Top of the second in a 1-1 tie. And the batter's going to be Stan the Man Musial for the Cardinals. And he gets a 1-5 batting against a righty. And that is going to be a triple. Yes, indeed. A triple for Stan the Man Musial. So we got all kinds of hits flying around this park. Two great pitchers, but they're not pitching like it so far. Enos Country Slaughter. He gets a 6-7 batting left. And that is going to be a single. And that knocks in a run. 
he knocks in um, Stan Musial, and he's allowed his fourth hit and his second run already. So Ted Simmons is the batter. He gets a 1-7, and he is batting against a righty. That's a strikeout. Oh, I think my pen is dying. But luckily, I got a backup pen ready to go. Even got another one after that. So there is one out, and Ozzie Smith, Ozzie the Wizard, he is up. He gets a 411, and he would be batting left, and that is going to be a single. We're reading it right off the card. It was a ballpark single, but we don't do ballpark singles. So he gets a hit. That moves Slaughter to second. You've got two men on with only one out. And Lou Brock back to the top of the order. And he gets a 112, which is a line out to second base max. So that's going to be a line out into a double play. But the Cardinals do strike for a run in the second. And we go to the bottom of the second. And Gabby Hartnett is up. He's the catcher for the Cubs. And he gets a 2-4, which is going to be a pop-out to shortstop. That brings up Pathco. Andy Pathco. And he gets a 5-10 batting right. And that's going to be a ground ball to the third baseman. The third baseman for the Cardinals is a 1E21, and that is going to be a 5, probably an out. And it is. So he goes out 5 to 3. And that brings Jim Hickman up. And he gets a 4-7 against a righty, and that's going to be a ground ball to the shortstop. Wait a minute. I know, 4-7. Yeah, that's still going to be a... It's going to be a strikeout, actually. So Bob Gibson with his second strikeout of the game and no runs coming in for the Cubs. We go to the top of the third with the Cardinals leading here 2-1 to one over the Cubs. And Willie McGee, the second batter in the lineup, but the first batter this inning gets a 2-10, and that is going to be a single. So Willie McGee is aboard with a leadoff single. Of course, he could steal two. He is a stealing A, and he will try it. And he does make it, so he steals second. They're running wild on this uh, Cubs team. And Rogers Hornsby is the batter, 370 hitter, 5'9", batting right. Um, and that's going to be a ground ball short. The shortstop is the is um, is for them a two e twenty, that is a sixteen, and uh, that's going to be an out. So he's out at first base. Nobody moves anywhere. He goes six to three. Surprising Hornsby has been out twice, and uh, Kuhols is up with one down and a man at second. And he gets a 5-8 batting right, and that's going to be a pop-out to short. He pops out 6, and that brings up Boyer, Kenny Boyer. And he gets a 2-7, and that is going to be a ground ball to the shortstop, 6-3. So, uh, Three Finger Brown doesn't manage to give up any more runs to the Cardinals there, although they did allow a man to hit second base. But uh, we're going to the bottom of the third with Heine Zimmerman batting for the Cubs. He gets a 6-7 batting right, and that is going to be a strikeout. Another strikeout for Gibson. That's three on the day that I've got. Jimmy Shepard is up. Jimmy Shepard gets a 4-8 batting left. And that's going to be a strikeout. 
that's the fourth strikeout. You can expect some strikeouts from Bob Gibson. And Wildfire Schultz. And he gets a 4-6 batting left, and that's going to be a fly ball to right field. F9, no runs for the Cubs. We go to the top of the fourth inning. And Stan the Man Musial is up. And he gets a 1-2, and that is going to be a walk. They walk Stan Musial. And just for craps, what was he stealing? He was a stealing D, so he is not going anywhere. He'll stay right there with Enos Slaughter. Enos Slaughter gets a 111, and that is going to be a fly ball to left. One away. Ted Simmons. Teddy Simmons, the catcher. Today, he's he gets a 510. He would be batting left. And uh, that is going to be a ground ball to the shortstop. The shortstop for uh, the Cubs is a 2E20, as we established. And that is a double play because it's the same roll as we got last time. So it's a uh, 6-4-3 double play and out of the inning. And no runs for the Cardinals there. That brings up Billy Williams. And he will be leading off the bottom of the fourth for the Cubs. They're down 2-1 to one here. 3-9 is going to be a single. So Billy Williams gets aboard with a hit. It's another hit allowed by Gibson. And he is a stealing D. He'll stay right where he is. Bringing up Ernie Banks. Ernie Banks gets a 3-5, and that is going to be a home run. Ernie Banks hits a jack off of uh, Gibson. It's crazy. It's crazy, I know. So Gibson gives up a hit, two runs, and a home run. Jeez. I could have sworn it was a home run. But, uh, well, anyway, I mean, uh, yeah. So there's two runs that come in and no, still no outs. And Ryan Sandberg, and he gets a 5-5 five, five batting right. And that's going to be a strikeout. One down and Gabby Hartman. Gabby Hartnett gets a 4-7. He's batting right, and that's going to be a strikeout. So now Gibson wants to get them all out, but, you know, it might be a little late for that. Um, Pafko is up, and he gets a 1-8, and that is going to be a line out to third base. So, uh, two runs, though, come in for the Cubs, and they take a 3-2 to two lead over the Cardinals here as we go to the top of the fifth with Ted Simmons up, three-finger Brown still out there for the Cubs. 6-8, uh, and he is going to be batting left, and that is going to be a single to center field. So, single for Ted Simmons. Or no, that wasn't Ted Simmons. That was Smith, but he would still be batting. He would still get that hit. So he got, Ozzie Smith gets the single here in the fifth. And he is a stealing A. He will try to steal. He makes it. He <laughs> There was a roll of one, so I would have made it. But he does make it. Stolen base. And that is the third stolen base for the Cardinals today, trying to tie this game up. With Lou Brock up, and Lou Brock is a bunting C. They're just going to let him hit. And he gets a 6-4 batting left, and that is going to be a ground ball to the third baseman. And the third baseman is a 2-E65, but it looks like it's going to be on his range, which is good. And that's going to be a ground ball C. 
So ground ball C, Lou Brock moves, um, he moves Smith over to third. And now there's a man 90 feet away, but there's a lot of game to play. The Cardinals are going to play back, or the uh, Cubs are going to play back on the infield with Willie McGee up. And he gets a 110, and that is going to be a ground ball to first base A, so nobody moves anywhere. And that brings up Hornsby. Hornsby in a key spot here. He he's, hasn't gotten a hit yet today. He hasn't gotten on base yet. But got a man 90 feet away and two outs. And he gets a 210, and that is going to be a fly ball to right. And he continues to not get any runs or any hits here. Um, he flies out to the right fielder, and no runs come in for the Cardinals. In the fifth, we go to the bottom of the fifth with Jim Hickman up. And we got Bob Gibson still out there. He had a bad inning last inning, but he's still out there. And a 111 for Hickman is a ground ball to the pitcher. So Hickman goes one to three. Bob Gibson throws him out. And Heine Zimmerman is up. Zimmerman gets a four eight batting right. And that's gonna be a fly ball to center. And that brings to the plate the leadoff hitter for the Cubs, Jimmy Shecker. Jimmy Shecker gets a 1-4, and that is a fly ball to left. And no runs come in for the Cubs there. They still maintain their 3-2 lead, though. Top of the sixth inning, Albert Pujols is leading off against Three Finger Brown. And he gets a 1-5, which is a jack, and he ties the game. Albert Pujols gets a leadoff home run here in the sixth that ties the game up, and Mordecai Brown is beside himself. He can't believe it. Ken Boyer is up. He gets a 4-6 batting right. And that is going to be a strikeout. So uh, Boyer strikes out. That's only the I've got that as only the second strikeout for Three Finger Brown. Stan Musial, uh, of course, in his day, people didn't strike out quite as much. Two eleven is a ground ball, first base C. So that is going to be a ground out to three. And Enos Country Slaughter is up. And he gets a 5-4 batting left, and that is going to be a catcher card. And the catcher is a 1-E-1. That's a 3. I'm going to have to think that's probably an out. And it is. It's a foul out. <coughs> foul out 2, but the Cardinals tie the game in the 6th. We go to the bottom of the 6th in a 3-3 game. Wildfire Schulte. He gets a 5-4 batting left, and that's going to be a catcher card. And um, let's see, the catcher Simmons is a 3-E-6. That's a 20. 20 and a 3 is a foul out. So Schulte fouls out to the catcher to lead off in the sixth for the Cubs. And uh, Billy Williams is up. Billy Williams gets a 5-10 batting left. That's going to be a ground ball short. The shortstop for the Cubs is a 2-E-20. That is a 20, probably an out. And it is 6-3. Which brings up Ernie Banks. 111, and that is going to be a fly ball to left. So, no runs for the Cubs there. We go to the top of the seventh. Now, both of these pitchers easily, Bob Gibson and uh, Three Finger Brown, could go seven innings. And they both get up, given up three runs, but they've given up three runs to an all time lineup. So, Going to cut him a little slack there. 
You've got uh, Ted Simmons up for the Cardinals here in leading off the seventh inning. And he gets a 3-5, which is going to be a ground ball to the second baseman. He goes out 4-3, and Ozzie Smith is up. He gets a 3-5, and that is going to be a single. So Ozzie Smith is aboard with a hit. He got on last time with a single, and he stole second. He'll try to steal again. This time he makes it again. So that's two stolen bases for Ozzie Smith. And that brings up Lou Brock with a man at second and one down. And he gets a 3-7, which is going to be a fly ball to center. So that's two down. And Willie McGee up. And Willie McGee gets a 6-11. He would be batting um, left. And that's going to be a fly ball left field B. No runs come in for the Cardinals. We go to the bottom of the seventh again. Uh, Mordecai Brown is going to, or uh, Bob Gibson's going to stay out there um, because the uh, because you know three runs against an all-time lineup not too bad. Ernie Banks, Ernie Banks gets a six-eight batting right, and that is going to be a walk. So Ernie Banks is aboard. That's. Or wait a minute, that was, nope, that was uh, Sandberg. And, but he's still batting right and it's still off the pitcher card. So it is it still is a walk. Gibson walks his first man of the day and Ryan Sandberg is a stealing B. They're going to try it. Oh, that's a 12. What is a B? We have to check that out. I don't remember what a B is, and that is 1 to 13, and the catcher's arm, the catcher is a negative one arm. Gibson's pitch, the catcher is um, Simmons, and he is a negative one arm. So he barely make he also barely makes a stolen base. He gets but he does get it. Gabby Hartnett is up. And he gets a 2-8, and that is going to be a fly ball to center. So there's one down with a man at second. And Andy Path go up. And he gets a 5-7 batting right. And that's going to be that's gonna be a single double asterisk and knock in the go-ahead run for the Cubs. So that, that uh, stolen base by Sandberg is looming large now. Jim Hickman is the batter. He gets a 6-9 batting right, and that's going to be a strikeout. That's the seventh strikeout for Bob Gibson today and Heine Zimmerman. And he gets a 6-5 batting right, and that's going to be a, whoa, that is going to be a single double asterisk. So the Cubs now have another threat going here. As they have they have two outs, but they have runners at the corners with their leadoff man Jimmy Sheckard up. And he gets a two three, and that's gonna be a ground ball to the first baseman. So uh one run comes in for the Cubs. That was the go-ahead run. We're in the top of the eighth. They are gonna take um they're gonna take the Cubs are gonna take Mordecai Brown out of the game. So he goes seven innings, and he allows five hits and three runs, and he's going to leave with the lead. And the Cubs will bring in, 
they're going to bring in um, Bruce Suter, who could have been on either one of these teams, but I put him on the Cubs. And uh, he is he's coming in. Oh, wait a minute. No, nope, wrong team. Got him. And he's going to face the uh, Cardinals Hornsby. Rogers Hornsby here in the top of the eighth. Who hasn't gotten on base yet today. 5-5 five, five, batting right against Suter. That's going to be a strikeout. So Suter strikes out the best hitter that the uh, that the Cardinals have, Albert Pujols. He has a home run today, and a 1-7 is going to be a double. So add a double to his home run. There's one out, man at second, and Ken Boyer up. Ken Boyer gets a 3-2, which is a walk. So now there's two aboard. Two, Suter allows two guys on here after striking the first guy out. Stan Musial. He gets a 310, and that's going to be a walk to load the bases. The Cardinals have loaded up the bases on Bruce Suter. So maybe the uh, Cardinals fans are happy that they didn't get Bruce Suter. Um, Venus Country Slaughter's up with one out. Um, the Cardinals are going to, or the. Uh, the Cubs are going to play back for the double play. They're going to hope for the double play. They're home and they have a lead. 4-3 against a for a left-handed batter. That is going to be a single to right field. And we're going to have to see if they send the batter. So Suter allows a hit. He allows definitely at least one run. That is Pujols that scores for sure. And uh, Boyer, what is Boyer running? Boyer running is a 1 to 16. Oh boy, 1 to 16. You know what? They've only got, what do they got? One out. They've only got one out. They're going to let the, the lineup keep hitting. They're not going to, they're not going to press the issue. Simmons comes up, he gets a 6 7, and he would be batting left. And that's going to be a fly ball center field B, and it scores another run. So the, the Cardinals score two here in the eighth. And Ozzie Smith is up with two down and two on. And he gets a 6-10. And a 6-10 batting uh, left would be a ground ball to the shortstop. The shortstop for the Cubs, as we've established, is a 2-E-20. That's a 17. Probably going to be an out. And it is... And so he goes out 6-3. But the Cardinals take a two-run a two-run lead here. So they have two, four, five to two. Wait a minute. Yeah, they yeah, they're well, they have a one-run lead. The Cardinals are ahead five to uh Five to four, I've got. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. One, two, three, four. Yep. All right. So we're in the bottom of the eighth. The Cubs trying to tie this back up, and they will take out Bob Gibson. So Bob Gibson is done after seven himself. And they will bring in Mark Littell. The Cardinals are bringing in Mark Littell to pitch. Two Wildfire Schulte. Is that right? Yep, that is right. And he gets a 6-9, and he's batting left, and that's going to be a ground ball to second. So Schulte's out 4-3. Williams is up. He gets a 5-3 batting left. 
and that's going to be a fly ball to right. The right fielder for the Cardinals is a 1E7. That's a 19. I'm guessing that's an out. And it is. And Ernie Banks is the batter. They could use a home run here from Banks. He gets a 3-4, which is a home run. Are you kidding me? Is he a righty? Yes, it is. They could use a home run from Banks, and they got it. And so it's a tie game again. Littell allows a hit and a run and a home run. And, uh, yeah, we got a tie game on our hands with Ryan Sandberg up. And he gets a 3-7, and that is going to be a single. So Ryan Sandberg is aboard with a hit. Littell, is, he's just falling apart after getting the first two guys out. And Gabby Hartman. And he gets a 2-8, and that's going to be a fly to center. Hartnett flies out to center, but the Cubs tie the game at 5-all. This is a crazy good game here, folks. And uh, they're going to let Suter pitch for the second inning. Or wait a minute. Let's see. Ozzie Smith. Wait a minute. Who is? Wait a minute. The Cardinals are up. Yes. So Ozzie Smith should be up. No, he's not up. It's the top of the order with Lou Brock. And so Lou Brock will bat against Suter. It's a 110, and that's going to be a ground ball to first. And we're in the top of the ninth here, so. Ground out three. McGee is up. The Cardinals, of course, have speed. They've stolen like four bases today. And 4-7, batting left, is going to be a... And out, that's going to be a ground ball first base. So two, two ground outs to the first baseman. With Hornsby up, they could really use Hornsby homering here. And it's a 4-4 batting right. And that is going to be a catcher card. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, it's going to be a catcher card X. And the catcher for the, um, for the Cubs is... A 1E1, e one, and that's a 4. I'm going to guess it's an out, but who knows. It is. So, Hornsby pops out to the catcher. And uh, I don't know if they're going to go... I don't know if the Cardinals want to stick with the... Le, um, Littell here. I'm going to say they are. They're going to stick with Littell for this inning at least. Um, and Pafco is up. Bottom of the ninth here. A run would win it. 4-6 batting right. That's going to be a walk. Wait a minute. No, it's going to be a single. It's going to be a single for Pafco. So Littell is really, really falling apart here and the Cardinals will get some somebody up in the bullpen they're going to get up uh, Todd Worrell Todd Worrell is up in the in the uh, pen Jim Hickman is up at the plate he gets a 310 and that's going to be a ground ball first base B so there is one down that's a fielder's choice And Zimmerman, Heine Zimmerman is the batter with a man at first and one out. And he gets a 5-7 batting right. That's going to be a strikeout. So Latell has settled down a little bit here. And Jimmy Sheckard gets a 6-11 batting left. And that's going to be a ground ball to the pitcher. And he is a he is a one e eighteen. That is a six. Let's see, six. So 
So we're going on E18. And that is a five on an E18. And that is going to be an E1. So Sheckard gets on by an error, which moves Pafko to, or moves uh, Hickman to second. And brings up Wildfire Schulte. And he gets a 110, and that is going to be a ground ball to the first baseman. So we're all tied up. Uh, still, no runs for the Cardinals there, or wait for the uh, for the Cubs. Yeah, both teams have batted in the ninth. So we're going to the we're going to extras here. We're going to free baseball, and uh, let and uh, Suter will come out for the uh, for the Cubs. And they are going to put in they're going to put in uh, Jeremy Jeffress. And the Cardinals are sending up pool holes here. He's the leadoff batter to face Jeffress. He gets a 110, and Jeffress is a righty, and that is going to be a home run 1-19, to and it is. It's out of this part. Second home run for Pujols. But you got to ask yourself, is that going to be enough? Because the Cubs always seem to come back. Which brings up Ken Boyer. And he gets a 210, and that's going to be a ground ball second base. So he goes out 4 3. Stan Musial is up. He gets a 111, and that is actually going to be a no. He just misses a home run. It's a fly ball to left, a deep fly to the wall. And that brings Enos Country Slaughter to the plate. And he gets a 4 7. And uh, he's batting left, and that is going to be a ground ball second baseman. So he goes 4-3, but the Cardinals take a one-run lead in the 10th inning, and they will take, the Cardinals will take Littell out. He is done for the day, and they've seen enough of him. And they're going to bring in Todd Worrell. So we're, Worrell is on to try to nail it down and uh, to try to get the run back is uh, Billy Williams leading off here in the 10th. And he gets a 110, and that is going to be a walk. Let's see, is Worrell a righty? Yep, so that is a walk for Billy Williams. Williams is aboard. They're not going to try any antics here because they need to make sure that he scores somehow. Ernie Banks is up. He gets a 2-5, and that's going to be a single. So Worrell is falling apart just as much as everybody here. The pitching has not had a good day here. Not at all. <laughs> Ryan Sandberg is the batter. And that's a 1-9. And that is a <laughs> home run. Ryan Sandberg sends everybody home happy with a homer. And that was his first of the game. But, yeah, I mean, three runs come in there. And, um, unfortunately, Worrell was just overmatched. And so the Cubs score three in the 10th, and they end up winning this game five, six, seven, eight, two, two, three, four, five, six. Eight to six is your final score in 10 innings. 
between the all-time Cubs and the all-time Cardinals.